What's up my dudes? Today I'm here to do my April wrap up. Do you know how much I read in April? <laughs> I read 12 books and only one of them was a graphic novel so this is like a great thing for me and I'm telling you being on lockdown and quarantine in my house has been great for my reading life. So let's get into all the books that I read in the month of April. First book that I read in the month of April was Flamecaster by Cinda Williams Chima. Now this book I had a little more high hopes than I did for the Seven Realms I think it was, the Demon King and all of those books. I had more higher hopes for this because it's actually a much later series that Cinda Williams Chima had written. But I gave it a 2.5 stars out of 5. I did not like this. We have a prince who is the son of the main characters in the first series, so this is a sequel to that series, and we also have this girl who has like a curse on her, and the prince and this girl, they both have an agenda to get their revenge for whatever happened. I felt like it just had so much potential, but the way that it was delivered was really short. I've also mentioned this previously with another series of Cinderella's Trauma, which was the Seven Round series. I did not like the romance in that book. It was not something that I really enjoyed to read and this is exactly the same shit. We had this romance in here which was like faster than insta-love. I'm not even kidding. They met once and the next day they were fucking. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It was that bad. Like it was so quick. I didn't... I couldn't understand it. Like how the heck? <laughs> it was disgusting. And they were just like, oh I'm in love with you. Literally the next time they met they were like, I'm in love with you. Let's just make out and make babies like why not because that's normal needless to say i will not be continuing on with the series because i just kind of give hope on it completely um there's also one amazing aspect in here there's a dragon involved in the very end of the book in the very end of the book like in the last 50 to 100 pages there was a dragon and i was like you could have used this whole thing much earlier and made the whole plot line more interesting but you brought her in the very end with a stupid ass romance and i was just like I didn't like it guys, I'm sorry, I hated this book so much. <laughs> Don't come after me! I know there are a lot of people who like Cinda's writing style, it's just definitely not for me. So I will stop bashing on her other books and just stop reading it completely. So that is my take on it. Not the best start to the month, I know, but like it is what I read anyway, so this is the first one. Next up I read The Fountains of Silence by Ruta Sepetis, and this one I actually really did enjoy. We're in 1957 in Madrid and we have this photographer guy who was going there with his family um, and they're supposed to be like really rich and living in a hotel. We're at this time where there's the dictatorship of General Franco, this is like actually a real person, this technically really happened. Not well, the story didn't really happen, but the premises and stuff did. 18-year-old Daniel ends up meeting the love of his life, I guess. He connects with Anna, who's a hotel maid, and she is living in completely different circumstances than what Daniel is used to. She has a lot of family issues that's going on with herself and her family. Like, she has to deal with a lot of stuff on her own. She doesn't need anyone to be close with her and kind of destroy her life or whatever. Um, during his stay in Madrid, he realizes there are a ton of events that go on in the back ends of Madrid that not a lot of people talk about, and it's not known to the world at all. Um, Daniel comes to know some of these wicked truths. There were stuff like little babies being stolen from their parents on the pretense that they were taken to baptism or something and they've never returned. The child dies at childbirth when technically they never really did. The child was supposed to be super healthy and apparently they still died. They're just given to adoption and whatnot. So I believe this actually happened from what I've read. Um, these did happen like the back ends, not a lot of people knew about it. He does take these wonderful pictures that, that brings into the world this question of what can you actually believe and is the world what it seems to be. It is a really beautifully written story. If you didn't know, Rita Sepetis is the same author who wrote Salt of the Sea. I personally love that book much more than this, but still I gave this one a 4.5 stars out of 5. I thought the writing was beautifully done, the story wrapped up pretty nicely. Um, it was everything was like almost too perfectly done, <laughs> but still it was really nicely done. I really enjoyed it. Okay, next up I read When Dimple Met Rishi by Sandhya Mena. This is actually the first book of the Dimple Met Rishi series. I think I read the second book uh, last month, which was called There's Something About Sweetie. I loved that book so, so much which is why I picked this one up as well and I know a lot of people really love it and it's super hyped. I was okay with this book, I gave it three stars. The one thing that I really didn't like was there was so much lack of communication that I hated. So anyway, this book is about Dimple who's this super super smart girl 
who's just done with high school and she's going into university and whatnot. And her mom is one of those people who wants her to find a perfect Indian husband. She decides she wants to go to this web designing camp program thing and her parents actually agree to this. Um, she's really surprised, she's really happy and she goes. On the other hand, there's Rishi Patel who is this nerdy guy who is going into engineering but he's a great artist. Obviously being Indian, being an artist was technically not an option for him so he goes into engineering, that's what his path is. He ends up meeting a dimple thinking that she already knows about his existence but she doesn't. She didn't know this was actually set up. That's why her parents allowed her to go in the first place. In the beginning, dimple completely hates Rishi but she starts growing kind of soft with him I guess and she actually starts liking him. Started a little bit of a romance and one of the biggest things was that Dimple didn't like that Rishi was one of those people who was possibly pulling her back from her career goal. And there was so much lack of communication because of it and that's why I thought this was not that well done because many of the issues that they faced they could have just talked to each other without like yelling at each other and it would have been perfectly fine. But there was so much miscommunication, they were just not talking, which led them to almost like break up and whatever. And I was just like, mm, why? That's kind of dumb. But I still liked it. It was a good book. I gave it three stars. Next up, I read Nimona by Noel Stevenson. This is a graphic novel. I adored this. I gave this a 4.5 stars out of 5. I also listened to the audiobook for this one. Um, it's a really adorable audiobook, by the way. So it has these fun audio effects of like destruction and stuff. And the artwork is also super adorable. So we have Nimona, who is a shapeshifter, and she kind of teams up with this villainous character called Lord Ballister Blackheart. So both of these characters want to wreak havoc, and so their mission is to prove to the general public that government, who are the good people, are actually not that good. They have like other agendas in the background, which the regular people don't know about. And they just want to make sure that people know that the institution of law enforcement and heroics are not what they seem to be. The Hassel's arch nemesis called Sir Ambrosius Golden Loin. I thought that was a really funny name, but anyway. This kind of gave me vibes of like Megamind. It's really nothing like it, but just the characters and the way that they talk kind of gave me some vibes of Megamind. I really enjoyed it because of it too. But soon enough we see that Nimona and Blackheart are getting closer. Like they have a really cute relationship. We realize that Nimona has a greater backstory to her powers that we don't really know about, that um, Blackheart doesn't know about, and once they figure that out, they have to like almost stop her, I guess, because there's a lot of craziness with her powers as well. I really enjoyed it. Next up, I read My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars, and I've talked about this, I think, a couple of times on my channel already. I adored this book. It was just so heartbreaking. We have 15-year-old Vanessa who is being raped by her English teacher when she's in high school. She completely believes that she's in love with him and he's in love with her, so she never really questions much of it. And then, like, 17 years later, we see her her as an adult and how this past has affected her. We see all this time that she really truly believes that he loved her and there's never an issue of rape involved there. But there are small bits and pieces where she's like, if this happened to me, anybody else can take care of themselves and why didn't anyone help me when I was younger? Like so small things like that make it seem like she knows that she was raped but she doesn't want to almost accept it. It was so heartbreaking. I loved it so much. I turned the light on. Hopefully that helps with the lighting a little bit. Um, but anyway, the next four books I read were part of a series called The Diviners. So I read The Diviners which I gave a 4.5. Lair of Dreams I gave 3 out of 5. Before the Devil Breaks You I gave 5 out of 5. And The King of Crows I gave a 4 out of 5. The Diviners is about this girl Evie O'Neill. She can actually read any object and say it's past. Well, I think I've mentioned this before on my channel too. If she found this ring or something she could potentially tell the person where this ring came from, who gave it to that person, all the history attached to this particular thing. That's her power and nobody really knows where the diviners came from. We don't know if more people exist. Um, Evie is able to find more people that actually exist in this world. She has to move to her uncle's house in New York City because of the scandal that happened in her hometown. And once she gets to her uncle's place, she realizes really quickly that she's not the only diviner and maybe her powers can also be used to solve a murder mystery that's going on in New York. Each book has these um, little horror stories attached to it. It's not super creepy in the sense that you can't sleep. But if you read the audiobook, maybe you will never be able to sleep again because there's this very creepy voiced character in there and it's just, it's very well done, but like, Jesus Christ. 
it was creepy. <laughs> it was a good series overall. I personally didn't love the last book. I thought it could have been done a little better. Um, I just had high expectations for it, so I didn't think it lived up to it, and I was a little disappointed by it. But you know what? I didn't hate it, so it is what it is. I also read Before the Devil Breaks You during the Reading Rush uh, readathon. I also have a wrap-up for that, so I talked about this book in that one as well. Next up, I read American Panda by Gloria Chow. I also read this during the Stay Home Reading Rush challenge. I have a wrap-up, like I mentioned, for this. I will leave it linked down somewhere. This one I gave a 3 out of 5 stars. I didn't super enjoy it. I have more thoughts about this book in my Reading Rush wrap-up. The next book I read was House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J Mass. I gave a 2.5 stars out of 5. You know what? It was an 800 something pages book and the last 100 pages were interesting. I didn't really love it. I don't think if I have to read an 800 pages book, I should only be interested in the last 100 pages. Like that's not enough. I can't. Okay. I've said this a lot of times. So I really adored when the Throne of Glass series started. Like the Assassin's Blade right here was literally my favorite book. I loved it so fucking much. It was such a cool concept. There's assassins involved. It was so good. And then Throne of Glass happened. It was fine. I didn't hate it or anything. It was good. And the second and third book came, I was like, fine, it's still good. And then it turned into Aquatar. Like, how did that even happen? It's the same shit that's happening right now in this particular series as well. We have these characters who are like part fairies, part werewolves, part vampires and whatever. Like, it's a lot of stuff. Our main character is part fairy, part human. And there are characters that are like half angels or something. They have wings and shit. They're supposed to be cool. Every single man is like an alpha male with like six-pack abs and perfect bodies, perfect hair, perfect beards if they have beards. In the beginning we find Bryce Quinlan whose best friend Danica dies brutally. She's completely wounded by this whole situation. She sees the aftermath of this character Danica who is also part like a wolf or something and her whole pack is massacred. So Bryce is living without a purpose and she's just living as a shell basically. And we also have Hunt Asselar who is a fallen angel so he has wings and stuff like I mentioned earlier. Again six pack abs, perfection in all the sense of the word. He basically is assigned to Bryce to like be a guardian or whatever because the murders that happened with Danica is restarting again for whatever reason we don't know who the murderer is. The plot line is actually kind of interesting when you start reading it I feel like the first couple hundred pages are like nothing is really happening we just see Bryce in this shell of a person and that's it we don't really know what the heck is going on other than that. Bryce she tries to be quirky and it's just not that at all. <laughs> And then we have these characters, like literally everybody and their dog just curses. If you have two sentences spoken between two characters, they at least have a fuck and a shit in those sentences. Minimum. And within 10 pages, there was like a 50 curse words. And I was just like, why? That, that was not necessary. And I understand people do swear. That's fine. People do swear a lot. Like, I swear a lot, I get it. Not every single person swears that much and nor do you swear all the time. And it just kind of got really annoying after some time because you're just like, not everyone does that. It's just, oh man. You couldn't look away from it to concentrate on the plot at all, so it's just annoying. Also, there was, again, this is one of the biggest things that happened with SJM. These characters are not supposed to be immortal per se. Say these characters are torn apart bits by bits. They can't be resurrected again. Um, whereas if they got like a huge cut or something, they can regrow whatever happened to them and they should be fine. Like some of the characters can regrow things, but they are not perfectly immortal. And this whole war situation had bombs involved. So they should burst into pieces and die. And no, nothing. Nothing at all. I don't think I'm gonna continue on with the series because I will completely hate her. Because I still want to read the rest of the Aquatar series because Cassian is a thing and I want to know what happened to him. And this is not helping. <laughs> and the final book I read in the month of April was the fifth season by N.K. Jemison. This one I gave it 3 out of 5 stars. I was really confused on what was going on. There was supposed to be like this twist thing. I don't know why it was a twist, like why was it even there? I just was really confused. I did end up reading a Wikipedia synopsis because I had no idea what the fuck was going on. We have three different characters. We have Eason who's living really comfortably with her family and suddenly uh, in a day when she comes back home she sees that her son is brutally murdered by her 
husband and the daughter has been kidnapped as well. We understand that this character has some kind of special powers and son also had that and because of that he was just murdered. Okay, here's the problem. If you ask me to explain this book, I don't even know what I read to be completely honest. Um, I know there was like a few earthquakes and stuff. We have three different characters. Eason, like I mentioned earlier, her husband killed her son and left with their daughter and she's going in search for the daughter to save her. We have another character whose name is not there on Goodreads. Okay, we have another character who is like really young, maybe in her teens I think, and she's being recruited into the school place which is basically like a prison but it is to control her powers that she has. She has this weird relationship with her mentor who is kind of hurting her a lot to show that she can control her power and she has to control her power which is weird. There's another character who is already like a magician person. She has like four rings which makes her powerful and she's with this person who has 10 rings who's like the most powerful like wizard magician thing i don't know what they are really so like i said this character is also involved and she has to have sex with this guy who has 10 rings and make babies essentially that's her role and yeah so we have these three characters and they have this whole earthquake situation that's happening because some dumbass thought it was a great idea to destroy the world or something we don't really know what the heck is going on um and I don't know, maybe I was listening to the audiobook, so that's why I was really confused. I, I, the whole time, like I needed to read Wikipedia like I mentioned and I did not understand what the heck was going on. Which is the reason I gave them three stars because I didn't understand the book. But like the things that I understood, I liked. So yeah, um, <laughs> I'm a dumbass guys. If you didn't know this by now, you... <laughs> Hmm, okay. <laughs> anyway, those were the 12 books that I read this month. I really enjoyed many of them. Let me know how many books you would finish reading in the month of April. And until then, I'll talk to you guys in the comments. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!